Okay, so yeah, I'll be starting with um, how to make uh, a curriculum that is, that is CV. Like we all know that the CV is very important for any graduate school application, and it is very crucial because basically it summarizes all your personal information, your research experience, and some of the um, information that actually um, defines you. So like we all know, because majority, I expect that majority of us have actually been to one or two seminars on how to create a CV or probably you already have a CV or even maybe you've seen some YouTube videos on how to make a CV. So I think the session today will be very, very helpful to everyone because you will be able to see a very competitive CV or probably try to like um, review your own personal CV that you have with you. Of course, all CV are the same because what you'll be seeing here is not really different from what you've seen before. However, today's session will actually teach you how you can package or how you can try to like word the content of your CV. So the second slide here actually summarizes the content of the CV like we already know personal information, education, research, or work experience, conference, research publication, teaching experience, leadership experience, volunteering, online courses, award and recognitions, languages and referees. Like we all know, CVs can be different because take for instance, if you're applying to Erasmus, the way you structure your CV for Erasmus basically will be different to how you structure your CV probably trying to apply to US graduate schools. So because for instance, there are some section that you, re you really do not have to put for your um, European CV. So however, today's session, we just teach you how you are going to like come up because basically if you really want to apply to schools, the first step is for you to have a CV that encompasses all your experiences everything either relevant or not so relevant. You have to have a single CV that will encompass all your experience. It means probably you see um, an application, probably you see um, an advertisement about a particular research. So it means that you have to like pick from your ready-made CV and create another CV or try to like delete some stuff from it. So basically, yeah, we are going to be walking through each of them. And I'll show you using my home personal um, CV because the CV has actually won me a lot of scholarships. So I think it is very important that I use my case as an example. So yeah, this first part actually shows how you are going to like structure your personal information. Yeah, you are going to put your name basically, yeah, your phone number, your LinkedIn address, your street and stores and your email. So these should just capture your personal information. Yeah, there is a way you can try to like link. So I expect because basically you shouldn't just copy your um, your um, LinkedIn address. Don't just copy it and just paste it directly here. I expect you to like link it. So you can try to like watch online, but I am very confident that you should be able to do something like this in your world. So just when you're in your um, CV, right click, scroll down, you're going to see something like link, copy the link in the address and name the um, link, like put link. So I think you should be able to do this. So basically this is how your personal information should look like. So I don't want to see your marital status or some uh, other personal information. So this should be enough. So the next thing here, is we are going to be going to your education section. So this education section should really be short because you don't have to put a lot of information because it will sound as if you are repeating a lot of information. Like take for instance, yeah, if you already have a master's, just like in my case, you have to put, because yeah, I'm studying like in two institution. So I try to like put it there. Probably you already have your master's, just put, something like this, so you can put expected. So yeah, if you already have your bachelor's, just put your institution, your course, and also your graduation GPA. 
as well put your address and the like the timeline of your bachelor's degree so basically this is how you should like structure your education yeah i because i think people always love to put probably in your education section you put something like uh, let's say people can put okay uh, best student in this under your education section you don't really need to do that because they will check all your application package it, it doesn't really mean that the focus of the review of your application will just be on your cv no they will check everything so basically just try to like put it now i have a comment for someone probably you are someone that that have like a two two you don't really have to put second class um second class division uh lower credit no you don't have to put it so because you you must make it look as if it is making a very good sense so here yeah, you can just try to put your gpa and put it in percentage take for instance if somebody probably you have like let's say 3.5 um over 5.0 you can just put it in percentage just put something like 3.5 divided by 5 and that's like 70 percent so so just put into bracket 70 percent so if take for instance there are some department that it is very difficult to have the first class in some schools so you can just put okay probably you might even be lucky to have a two one and you are even the best graduating student in your class so you can also put your top maybe top five percent top four top six or top seven percent so that is that about the education section here yeah, we have the research and work experience so yeah it depends it could be probably in your case you have a lot of work experience instead of saying research experience you can just put work experience so i think that would be that would actually be nice so yeah what you really want to do here is that put the title like the title of where you are working and also your role the location and also the timeline so this is very important the way you are going to structure your research experience and now what are your responsibility this is also equally important here you have to start with a verb in the past form you can see i'm using something like very uh, good verbs characterized studied investigated performed conducted so probably if you are like probably it is like work experience it to be like improved maybe like uh, you you got a funding for the company or something like that so just try to make sure everything starts with a verb and now like in my case because i've actually performed all these if the work is in like continuous probably you are staying in the role make sure that it is like um, a continuous verb and of course you must have achieved something in that particular role so i expect that the way you are going to structure your research or work experience should take this form now the next we are actually going to be seeing is the conference and seminar so you really did not have to tell me that ah i don't have like a conference i don't have this i don't have that it is not possible it is not like I don't think it is possible because you are on Twitter, you are seeing some, you are attending some online space, you are you see, you have YouTube, probably there's a particular conference ongoing, and probably they've uploaded their uh, the recorded conference. And you must, if you actually follow through the video, of course, you are also attended the conference. So basically, yeah, if you probably you've attended the conference here i attended the conference online of course electrochemical colloquium so you can say attended professor so i try to like mention the name of the professor so that it will look like oh i think i know this professor in usa okay i think this student is actually quite like quite updated to what is actually going on i also like attended the conference by this professor and now there can be question that how can we like know when these when to where to actually see all this type of conference you can just go on twitter because let me tell you the way i knew about this because i always try to search on twitter i just search for electrocatharsis because i'm interested in this type of research so like i was just fortunate to come across this particular professor and i saw that he has like an upcoming seminar and there was a link i just like followed and i was um 
I was able to attend the uh, online conference as well. This I was able to follow this conference uh, conference as well. Okay, I think these other ones probably it is a conference. Maybe your school and they actually tell you to write a report. You can also put it there and try to link your report to it. Maybe if the reviewer is interested in what you've done, they can just click it and say, okay, let, let me just take a look. Yeah, probably you have presented a poster at a particular conference. Like in my case, I presented the poster. You can see the way I try to like arrange everything. So I think this trying to follow this format will basically make your CV competitive. So moving ahead, here we have your publication and sample writing. The reason why I put sample writing is that it is not compulsory that you must have had like publication or maybe oh, I don't have publication and you've done a lot of lab reports, you've written reports. That's why it is very important that anything you are doing probably we have undergraduates in our midst, it is very important that anything you are told to do during school, make sure you do it properly because here, the way undergraduates do their stuff, like you, it is really incredible because you feel like they are already like PhD student. They make sure they do everything very well. So yeah, make sure any reports you are writing in your school, make sure you do it very well. Put good references. Don't just go to Wikipedia, copy stuff. Probably they ask you to write some report about a lab that you've done. Don't just copy everything verbatim because you will not have the benefit to have like a sample writing because everything here, the reviewer can just feel like, okay, let me check the plagiarism of what, what you actually linked. So it is as if you shot yourself in the leg. So basically, if you have um, a publication that has been accepted for like for publication, a manuscript rather that has been accepted for publication, so you can try to like put it very well. You don't have to put the name of the journal because you really have to avoid it to be like three three lines, so two lines is quite nice. So yeah, this is like an, um, a manuscript that has been accepted for publication in my case. Here, yeah, this is a lab report because here yeah, you can see the section that I put sample writing. It means that it is not compulsory that I have publication because majority of us might not have the opportunity. So, but you, you might have written, written a report or even, if your um, final year thesis, you already have your final year thesis, you can put it in this format. But here, you don't have to put all the whole thesis, just put the abstract. So just put abstract. Instead of calling it link, you can call it abstract. So they can try to read. So that is a way of showing that if given the opportunity, I can be able to write anything you ask me to write. So that is the essence of uh, this publication or sample writing. So yeah, so basically, and if you have already like published some work, some article, so you can try to like link it and make sure that it is just two, um, two stuff. Yeah, um, if you want to put it, make sure you put reports submitted to this department and the country and basically that's that. So that is how I feel you should like project your research publication and sample writing. Um, next, yeah, so your awards and recognitions, so make sure you just did them one after the other, okay, from most recent to the least recent, so make sure you just put everything up. Okay, yeah, there can be questions that, ah, I don't really have any award, or oh, um, what am I going to put, because I've reviewed a lot of CVs and I've like seeing that people don't really put a word. There's a way you can try to like put a word for it because in the kind of Nigerian system, most of the universities, they don't even give anything in terms of, okay, this school, uh, this particular student actually, okay, this particular student is really good in this aspect. So probably you are studying chemical engineering, they can say, oh, you are very good in control. You are very good in thermodynamics. You are very good in catalysis. You are very good in these subjects because oftentimes it is not possible for you to have interest in all the courses. It is not possible. So there are some courses, okay, you might even be good in biotechnology because you feel you can read a lot of things. 
you can read read but in terms of calculation or trying to do programming or stuff like that you might not really be that good so now probably you've seen that there are some courses you think you excel so well take for instance if you are interested in a kind of research on thermodynamics or probably on um, let's say chemical reaction engineering, and you are interested in catalysis, and you are fortunate that in this particular course, you feel like you had the highest score during that particular session. You have to be truthful in this case. So you must be happy, you must be certain that you had the highest score. So this kind of course, you can try to like put, okay, top 2%. If you are not that certain, but you can just say, okay, top 3% or top 1%, in this particular subject so that because of course you have to be you have to be careful because they will check your your transcript and they will correlate that okay probably this course you had like 90 something or probably 80 something it is not possible i think no matter how bad you are in the university there are some courses that you will still have like 80 something or 70 something no matter how even people that have two one or two so there will be that course that you really know so well and you excel so well. So basically that is how to put like award and recognition in your case. Also, if you've received uh, not, probably it is not academic award, it could be like leadership award, try to put it there because it will give you the opportunity not to have a scanty CV because if your CV is struggling to make like two pages, basically CV should be like two pages. So your CV shouldn't struggle to make two pages okay moving ahead yeah we have language and digital skills i think this is often seen in erasmus and also some u.s application yeah probably you are you are making a cv for erasmus you have to put your language maybe you can speak english very well in terms of okay professional speaker french intermediate portuguese beginner stuff like that computing skills okay you have this yeah we have analytical skills take for instance if you are studying a course probably like chemistry and you know chemistry involves a lot of analytical techniques so you can try to list all the techniques also if you feel like your cv is going to be scanty you can as well put your language and digital skills in your maybe u.s application or canada application make sure you put it there because they will, it will make it look um, nice. Um, moving ahead, yeah, we have reference. You can just try to like put okay the names of the of your referees. I've seen in some cases, you know, probably you are just scrolling through like LinkedIn. You're scrolling, scrolling. You just come across a particular post. Probably somebody shared it. You just feel like ah, I think this thing actually looks like my area of research. Okay, let me send. Maybe the professor just put it there that make sure you attach your list of referees in your like, you, you might state it in the CV or probably in your email to the supervisor. So just make sure you try to put the details of your professor, professor this, department of this, and the email of the professor. Also, you can also put the phone number with the country code. So that's very important. So I think, yeah. Let me show you a sample if you actually like follow. Let's see if the sample will come out. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think the sample is coming out somewhere else. Okay, yeah. So if you've like tried to like make your CV following the format, you see that everything will look so organized. And also if you are trying to put the, um, the bullet point make sure the bullet point is well arranged like they feel like you, you know at times some people are so lucky that probably it's it it might just be you have like a kind of good impression to like your profile has like a good impression to the supervisor and like, oh, i like how this student try to like align all his stuff it means you must have put a lot of work into making uh, this kind of cv so it means make sure that everything the bullet point there's no like shifting maybe this is these are shifted to this side it will make the review process to look so boring i feel like oh i'm not even like motivated to really review it because everybody we are human so so make sure that everything is well aligned and there there's no problem anyway so i think that's like um oh i think my slide has adjusted 
one minute. Let me try to scroll. So yeah, so that's like the sample of the CV. I think this is going to be the end of the first section. I think I spent like 20 minutes explaining this. So now we are going to be moving to the next section. The next section is about statement of purpose. Yeah, so this is where they will really see who you are like. Okay, we've seen your CV. Your CV is quite nice, but what? How are we going to be certain that you, you can, like, explain your experience? How are we going to be certain that you really know what you are doing? How are, how are you going to like explain all these your experiences? How will you like connect everything to make it look interesting and exciting? Of course. So, like we've already know, we know that. The SOP will actually contains the introduction, of course. You have to explain your research experience and your work experience. Also, it is very important that you explain the volunteer, uh, volunteering experience, what you have done outside academics. This is very important because they'll feel like, okay, if I should take you to my lab, if we have some other things that we really want to do, and it is not even like related to academics, will you be able to do it? So like school, like in my case, it was really surprising to me that there are a lot of things that actually goes uh, like aside academics. So you see when you actually get to those countries of your choice, you really see that a lot of things happen outside academics. So make sure that you really project your volunteering experience. Another thing is why you chose, I think I should put choose, okay. Why you chose the university and also professors of interest and your future goals. Yeah, this kind of format is basically for like, let's say Canada, Canadian schools and also like um, US schools. But if you are writing like an Erasmus SOP, I think there might be some little shift in terms of you, you don't really have to mention professor of interest because it is just a master's program. And you really will not even be studying in just a particular university. So you'll be studying a lot of university. So why would you say you, you are really interested in this particular professor when you'll be seeing like almost 20 professors throughout your um, two year study? So make sure that, but basically, of course, everything will look like the same thing in terms of trying to explain your research experience, especially um, the introduction part. So let us now look at each of these, I'll be showing you an example, a very good example, what you really have to do to actually make a strong CV. So the first part, yeah. <clears throat> this first part here is the introduction. The introduction, you really have to say three parts because for instance, there are some people that feel like, you know, I've, I've attended a lot of online on webinar where they would discuss about SOP and stuff like that. And of course, it, it has been really helpful. And now, you know, and I've read a lot of SOPs as well. There are some people that are very good to write. And also probably you have like a very touching story. Some people, they will start with their background story and stuff like that. But if you are like a student that doesn't really have like a touching story, like myself, I don't really think... I can think of like a touching story that can like motivate me. Some people can say, okay, I have trekked from here to like Ibadan for me to be able to uh, go to school. Probably I study under the um, <laughs> under the street light for me to be able to have a first class. So, but if that is not like your case, there are like ways in which you can structure your introduction first have a research interest. So once you pick that research interest, put it aside, take for instance, in this particular SOP, we are going to be looking at this person is interested in something like renewable energy. We have a lot of renewable energy. I think it is something that deals with nanomaterials applied to renewable energy. So this person has like this individual research interest. The next step, identify a problem. It might be in your country or probably what you've seen in the world. It can be, okay, there's problem of plastic waste or stuff like that. So identify this problem. So when you identify the problem, I think this last part, I really meant to say review your intention. I think it is 
yeah, of course, the introduction also have to contain, you have to contain something that reveals your intention. If you want to have, if you want a master's degree, make sure you review it. You like review it. Don't wait till the like, like in the future go or probably in the last second to the last paragraph before you review your intention. Once I read your first paragraph, your first paragraph should tell me why you are actually writing this SOP. Now, this example, I actually took it online in a particular famous website. It is basically common to people in the US because this website, it is for people applying to the National Science Foundation um, Research Fellowship. So it is for um, American citizen. So here, we are basically fortunate that the awardees actually put in their personal statements. So they like put, after the uh, after this session, I will really share the website with you guys. So basically, now we are going to be seeing all what I've highlighted. So if you try to like read, this person is saying, "My love for engineering started with boiling hot wanton soup and Carlos fingers. I first became interested in material science." When I worked at my father's Chinese takeout restaurant throughout high school, packing takeout orders and answering the phones every Saturday night, I noticed that the plastic container he used became more malleable due to the high temperatures which made handling the food painful, difficult, and cumbersome. You can see that this is like a problem. Like the person has actually started with trying to highlight a particular problem this individual has actually come across. You might, it might probably in your country, maybe you are interested in renewable energy and you see that, okay, fine. Almost everywhere we, we basically do not have lights. Like there are some, I've read a lot of stories that people have died basically based on like generator films. You know, some people probably, some people are not so careful. They put the, uh, their generator within their door and you might not know something else probably the smoke has started coming out and probably the person has heart disease or stuff like that. So it might actually basically lead, lead to death. So you have to make sure that you identify this problem. So once you identify that problem that is connected to your research interest, and even though if you are finding it difficult to see the problem, what you really won't have to do is that go to research article because if you want to like write the introduction of a manuscript, you have to like start with the problem so that it will make it more captivating. They feel like, oh, I think this research is really quite nice. So make sure you go to the research article and see the kind of problem they are trying to like solve with that particular research interest. So you can now see that I aspire to become the first person to make study biodegradable plastic a commonplace item, even for small business owners. Okay, although my passion for plastic has waned. I have pivoted towards making novel materials accessible to the general public with a focus on improving the state of materials for clean energy. Like this person is trying to like state the, the goal basically. And now you can now see this is the intention of this individual. I plan to complete a PhD in chemical engineering, working towards a faculty position and focusing on research that develops and implement up to electronic na nanomaterials in renewable energy application. So you can see, now let's see what this in the student have written here. I have long wanted to pursue a career as a teacher, but it will not, it will not until college that I realize professors have the unique opportunity to mentor students, conduct innovative research and provide broad society benefits all in one room. So you can see basically this introduction contains like the summary of what we are expecting to come. Like in the previous section, the person will be explaining something about the research experience and also your future goals and, and, other, and other stuff. So here, again, the, the most important part is for you to identify your research interest, identify a problem, and also review your intention. You can see if you read this, there are a lot of samples irrespective of your discipline, you are going to see it in the comment section. So yeah, I think I'm still on time. Moving to the next is the research experience. 
how are you going to like explain your experience? Because I've read a lot of SOP and I'll see students, they'll just be like, ah, uh, like a particular undergraduate research experience that you've spent almost one year. Um, if you are fortunate, uh, I don't know, uh, should I even call it fortunate? Probably in terms of ASU strike, the ASU strike extended it to like two years and you're able to do a lot of things in your final year research and you are projecting this research in just like two sentences. Like whenever I read something like that, I feel like, wow, okay. Like, because not that all these white, what they do, it is really like that spectacular. Of course, most of them do something that is pretty exciting and they do a lot of stuff, but majorly it can be comparable with what we do in our countries as well, in some cases. So yeah, your research experience, how are, going, how are you going to do that? First, how do you get to this experience? You have to tell us. So you can just say, uh, and I have also tried to synthesize drug, like synthesize drug, where, how, and why did you even come in contact with drug? So you have to tell us, how did you go to this experience? Let's see in this particular uh, same SOP. I have pursued multiple independent research projects within the field of material science and renewable energy. Good. My first project was through Trexel University student tackling advanced research scholars program. So we already know, okay, it is in this particular domain or this particular um, program, of course, a selective 10 week program that allows freshmen to work full time in research the summer after their freshman year. Okay, I've seen the duration, which is quite nice. During this program, good. That is where you're going to have your aim. During this, oh, sorry, I don't know. Yeah, during this program, let's see, I confirmed the potential of an absorber material for solar cells application in the nanomaterials for energy application and technology lab led by Dr. Jasmine Pasta. So now here yeah, you can see what these individuals have done. So like now you can see this person is obviously interested in nanomaterials and has conducted a research in nanomaterials. I know there will be a question like, ah, what about if all my experience doesn't even align with my new interest? It doesn't matter. You have to explain your research experience, but I will still come to that part. Here yeah, you have to apply, you have to show the method. So you have to explain what you did, like method, what did you carry out? Okay, I did this and that and this. Also tell us the result. Okay, at the end, I was able to confirm the presence of this particular thing or stuff like that. So make sure you um, mention the result. And finally, what is the impact of the experience? So you have to tell us the impact of the experience. So you can see, let's see, I presented my findings in a post at three technical conferences resulting in first place and fourth place prizes and increasing my confidence in science communication. So that is the impact of the experience. So don't just write your experience. Uh -huh. You've written the experience, but what is like the conclusion? The conclusion is for you to tell us how the experience has impacted your progress. So basically, this is very important. And now um, the next thing, I will be explaining is, so that's how you do, not just for a research experience or work experience, you have to do it, you can write the multiple of them. Like your CV, your SOP should be, you should initially have like a first draft. The first draft will explain all your experience, everything. So like in my case, I'm looking forward to submit my application for a PhD program. I have already written like all my experience down in a particular file. So it means whenever I just see a particular application, I see that, okay, it, in, it is interesting. I'll just copy all the paragraph, pa, 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 pa. I'll just join everything together, that's all. So it doesn't matter that, oh, okay, I have to start writing another SOP, no. I'll just feel like, okay, which are the ones that maybe aligns with what I really want to apply to. I'll just take them, put them together and that, that's all. So that is very important for the research experience. Also, the way we have written this research experience, you have to write your volunteering experience like that as well, following this particular format. Now, 
let's move ahead. Yeah, why you chose the university? What will you be explaining? You have to explain the strength of the department, the lecturers probably, the type of research they do. And um, in terms of the lecture, probably they have good uh, lecturer to student ratio. Maybe it is just like, it is quite nice, maybe four students to a particular lecture, which is really a good department. In terms of the faculty, try to check the school as a whole. So you have to mention, it can even be in terms of the location, probably take for instance, if you are someone that doesn't like cold and maybe, uh, maybe below 10 degrees, you start to have maybe like malaria or stuff like that. I will really not advise you to go to a region that is so cold, like Michigan. You, you are really afraid of cold, but you really want to go to the University of Michigan. Of course, it is not a problem for you to go there, but if it is going to have a detrimental impact to your health, I don't really see why you have to go to that particular school. Now, probably in terms of funding, maybe, okay, maybe the school is located in a very good area, you can also mention it. Probably the school is known to always have a stable funding. You also have to mention that maybe you have come in contact with some alumni of the school. So probably you, maybe one of the seniors told you to apply. You can also mention that, okay, because of the alumni, they, are, they were able to see good job and they are quite, really doing well in life. So I think these are good reasons for you to choose, sorry a particular, I don't know why, yeah, a particular uh, university. So you have to check, and um, how are you going to see some of these things? It is pretty easy, just check the university website. They are always available there. Like they will mention because they really want to convince you to come to their school. Of course, they would have put it there that, okay, well, fine, you have to come to this school because we offer this, we offer this, we offer this. Make sure you check the department as well. They will always tell you because they want people because when you go to their page, they really want to convince you to come to their school. So basically, try to check the university website for you to be able to write a good paragraph of why you chose the university. I moving ahead. Yeah, you have to tell us some professors you are interested in. If you are applying to a master's or PhD program in maybe US or Canada. Make sure you highlight some professors that you're interested in. Identify like two professors and research group. So write a few sentences about what they do and how it aligns with your research interest. So make sure you do this. Moving ahead, yeah. This part, your future goals. These future goals, you know, there are some times that when you read some people's, um, some people's statement of purpose, you just have to give them that scholarship because you will really see that they put in the work to write a convincing statement of purpose. That's why some people, when they apply, most of the time they always get their scholarship. So yeah, in the future goal section, you have to explain where you see yourself after the program, connect, connect your experience. Um, okay. Connect your experience with your future goals and solve a problem. So, yeah, if we go through this kind of like, uh, if we go to this kind of future goals from that particular statement of purpose, you see that everything basically aligns, everything basically aligns with what I've listed here in this section. So just make sure you go through, uh, make sure you write it so captivating and that, yeah. Moving ahead, um, yes, this website, website for free SOP. I've seen like in the chat where somebody have asked that uh, I'm, I'm only focusing on science. Yeah, I have this website for you guys. Obviously, if you're in the um, art um, discipline or probably the commercial discipline, basically you have to follow the same prototype. And if you really want to see essays in your discipline, I don't care the discipline you are, probably law, you're studying law or anything like that. So make sure you go to essayforum.com. I don't know if I can go to this website for you to be able to see that. Let me check. Yeah, yes. So this is the website. What you just need to do is come here, 
some okay i think i've searched before sop finance so just search sop finance go so you are going to see a lot of sops i don't know a lot of them so as to be able to see okay let's see okay sop for masters of finance you can just go there and see the way this person has written their sop so you can try to learn from it and also it is very important never never copy anything online and put it in your SOP. You know why? Because the, that particular field where they will ask you to upload your statement of purpose, that field might have already be like embedded with stony thing because stony thing actually like check for your plagiarism. So once you've actually put anything in your document that has been taken online, if you just write it there, you already know how stony thing does the work. So make sure you do not like check anything online and if maybe you are in, inspired by a particular sentence make sure you go to like um let's say something like um um this website uh, i've forgotten i don't know why but i'll still mention it very soon yeah so i think that will be all from me um in this particular webinar so also i think there's something I should really talk about. It is this Alex Hunter website, alexhunterland.com. So this is the website where I picked the SOP I used as sample in this talk. So that will be all from me. So I don't know if anyone has a question. Also, yeah, Quibot. Yeah, somebody already put it um, in the comment section. Yeah, Quibot, Quibot.com. So. I think that will be all for me in this. Thank part. you very much. This has been the event with enlightening. Um, that's a lot of work. I think there are some questions in the chat box. Um, let me see. I have some questions. Do you must one have certificate for the online course before putting it in one CV? That's the first question. Most please, for the, uh, can you say it again, please? For the MOOCs, most one have certificate for the online courses before okay, you can, yeah. TV. Then yeah. I can one join the, oh, okay. I would, I would answer the second one. So. How that, can I work? How can uh, I work? Please? No, the person who was asking about how um, he or she can join the Muslims in the group. I said I would answer that one. So it's just the first one about do you need to have the certificate for your online courses before you add it to your CV? Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, about the question, for me, I don't, really, I don't really think it is important for you to have a certificate for a particular online course because most, for instance, there are some online courses you might not be able to finish because take for instance, I'm kind of like quite lazy. So if maybe I'm checking for something and I've, actually learned that particular concept. I may not really like finish the course again, but I don't really advise you. Make sure you finish all your online <laughs> courses. Yeah, <laughs> it's very important. Please make sure you finish everything. So now it is not important that you finish it because just basically just state it there. I don't, I think I should, I don't know if I show something about MOOCs, online courses in the CV, I, I don't know. I think I did not, I think I did not show. So basically if, take for instance, if you've taken online course, you have to follow this format as well. In terms of your research experience, let, take for instance, I have, I might have even seen a YouTube video. It might even be a YouTube video that I've spent almost one hour checking that particular video and it applies to your research interest. So how are you going to do it? Just put, okay, online MOOCs, put the, um, uh, okay, put the name of the course. I don't know. Maybe it is, let's say, Introduction to um, Finance. Maybe it is Introduction to Finance. Put the website. So it might be, I don't know, maybe edx.org. So just put here yeah, the, no, you don't really have to put this because this will not be there again. And just put the, the month. It can just be maybe one month. Basically, it will be like a month, basically. Just say February. 2022 and probably it is like a lot of weeks long um, 
online course just put from february maybe february to march basically and here specifically write all what you've learned of course yeah because if you notice i have like five bullet points it is not important that you you really have to have five bullet points two bullets it might be two because they will check because you don't have to really deceive yourself why because if you put a lot of bullet points and here at, uh, in the timeline you really have like maybe like one month it is not possible for you to achieve all this in one month so you have to be careful so if you have like one month your bullet point should be though of course it is possible for you to do a lot of things but basically if you are doing something that is quite good or quite intense i think it should just be like two weeks maybe like two bullet points two to three bullet points are basically enough so just make sure you put what you've learned in two to three bullet points and put it there. So nobody is going to ask you, okay, bring the certificate of what? No, 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 no. I've not seen because I've reviewed a lot of people's SOP that have applied to Erasmus and they've won it without even like showing their CV or stuff like that. And they've structured it that way. And I don't think it, those online courses, they finished everything. So you don't really have to finish or get that certificate before you include it in your CV. So I think that's all. Yeah, um, two people's hands are raised. Larry, you can ask your question. Yeah, salam alaikum, Professor. Bye. <laughs> Bye, sir. Yeah, you don't do Hello? I don't know if it is Sorry, my... Sorry, we can't hear you, Larry. <laughs> um, Larry, we can't hear you, so we'll move to the next person. Um, please. Okay. Uh, first off, I would like to thank um, the um, speaker. Um, really did a uh, great justice to the presentation. And um, thank you very much. Um, I also like to, to thank him again because um, he was the one that welcomed me at Charles de Gaulle Airport last year. <laughs> I hope you could remember. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want to add one or two things to what he said um, regarding the MOOC. And um, I would advise that um, if you're applying to Erasmus, um, it's better that you put um, courses that you finished. Um, I'm going to give an example. Let's say, for example, you are in, let's say, computer science. And um, the field of computer science that you are is maybe um, part A, but the program is focusing on, let's say, part B. So it's advisable that you, you, you take um, MOOC courses so that you can learn more about the part B that you, you don't know, because it's going to be redundant if um, you already know something on, in part A, let's say data science. Um, so it, it's not going to make sense. And um, these days, um, the contest is kind of getting tougher and tougher each year. So I wouldn't want you to kind of limit your chances uh by not finishing the MOOC courses online and um yes um i will judge based on uh, my program because i i think they did a lot of verification about anything and everything that you have seen out there so it's it's not quite all right to put an um, incomplete application just to add if you thank you okay thank you very much Moise. um larry are you still online if you want to ask your question yeah sorry we're not talking about but so about the bullet, um, is it um, like, should we stick to consistency? Like now I see your CV has consistent five bullet points on each of your rows. Mm -hmm. Like someone that doesn't have up to five in some rows, can he choose to use three or two? Like he advised that we use same number. Oh, <laughs> Larry, can you hear us? So, Larry, uh, we can't hear you, but I think you get. Yeah, I think I get. I think I get. Yeah, obviously, I personally, I feel the bullet point should be a function of time because basically, yeah, if you see most of those bullet points, these are experiences in which I spent at least at least like um, a minimum of five months. So I think majorly, and of course, I've done a lot of stuff. So. I think that that was what influenced my five bullet points. Obviously, you can have two in this. I've seen a lot of CV, obviously. You might have two in this. Maybe, maybe, probably it is just a short internship. 
oh, you can still have another one that is five. It could be five, it could, it could be three, it could be four. So majorly, make sure that it's like a function of what you've done. So it doesn't really have to mean that it must be five or three, no. Yeah, okay, um, can I continue? Sorry, I'm back. I think you got your question, unless you have another question to ask. Yeah, I have five questions. That's just two out of five. The first one, I don't know if you have this. Sorry, I don't know if you have read the first one on the on the, the first one uh, of the oh it's first one on the bullet. Okay, you said that one already. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The second one was on the app that is it advisable to use an app to build a CV? App. Oh, okay. App. Yeah, because in Erasmus, the, they always refer people to use the um the online version of building a CV. So I think you can, but at times if you apply, because take for instance, if you are applying to like Stanford Chemical Engineering, I don't think it is, it's, it really makes sense to use an app because they already specify that it must be one page CV. And now it will be so difficult for you to, you know, the app will really behave the way they've programmed it. So all your experience that you might have squeezed in one page might be like extending to like two pages. So I think app is good if you apply to a particular application that doesn't require you that it must be two pages, three pages, of course you can use that because the layout, the design, everything will be consistent. But if you are restricted to the number of pages, because at times I could recall when I was applying to the Erasmus program, they specified that it must be two pages. And now I was finding it difficult for, for me to be like squeeze my experience to two pages, I was like, I have to like just do some, some personal um, magic so to be able to squeeze everything. So um, basically make sure that, dep basically it depends on the application. If okay. there's a restriction, no problem, yeah. Sorry, the first one on SOP. Yeah, you didn't mention, you did not make mention of word length. Should we stick to the word length of the application or we can write one based on our word length, then when we apply, we can adjust. Yeah. Then that one is two in one question. Then you talked about plagiarism on SOP. Yeah. The plagiarism on SOP now, like what percentage should be working with two words when we write SOP? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Now, uh, Look, that's how that one I do the rest. Yeah. Also, also. So, the word length, I have seen, if you're applying to US schools, they always, because take for instance, I have like an Excel. The Excel, the Excel actually tracks the pages of CV specified to an application. So what I always see there is that they will specify that, okay, your SOP must be two pages. No, most often time I always see pages, but in Erasmus application, most programs, they always put it, put it there that you must, you must try to pass forward. Like in my program, I, I can remember that they gave us a series of questions and they put it there 150 words. So it depends on what they ask you to do. But in this, my presentation, what I actually presented here is that have a particular first draft that will explain all your experience. So once you have that draft, so depending on the recommendation of the application, so just pick from there and create another CV. Obviously you will not be adding anything again. So just probably, it, maybe there are some paragraphs you just need to summarize. So you don't really have to talk about how you got to that experience. But what we need here is just like what you did. So basically that's that about the word name. It depends on the application and also it depends on, maybe it is in terms of pages, but here, make sure you have like a first draft of all your experience. So the, the toilet percentage. Okay, the plagiarism. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the plagiarism, uh, for me, I think, because it is very, very critical, I think there shouldn't be like plagiarism, like for me, it is it very difficult. Zero. For me. Like it should be zero because I don't think you should copy anything online personally because you shouldn't even have like 4% plagiarism because it is not even a man research manuscript. Yeah, I have to like cite people. Basically, it should be like zero, maybe zero to one, but I cannot say one because that might just be your only chance and you want to shoot yourself because of um, one thing that you've copied online. So please do not like, it should be zero, basically, zero percent, yeah. Okay, question number four now. Can I include uh, famous quotes in my SOP? 
like yeah, any car, I've, any yeah 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 i've seen i think you can yes if if it makes sense <laughs> so i think um you can put it here i've seen and finally it. the last one the last yeah. question do you recommend that an undergraduate student go for a conference if you can afford it or if possible or you should publish a book chapter or perhaps a manuscript a journal manuscript which one will you recommend on Un undergraduate in this case yeah so for undergraduate i think going to research con conference is advisable because majorly most it is just like let's say five percent of students in i don't know because uh, i'm not sure about the what the figure i'm quoting but of course i attended a nigerian school so i think majorly undergraduate should just go to research conference so in terms of book chapter i've seen a lot of students that are very good in writing i've seen a lot of them on linkedin when i'm scrolling i'll just see this student already an undergraduate has like maybe 15 publications so if you know you are very confident of your writing and you can write without copying something online and you can present your idea there's no problem having like a book chapter but if you feel you don't really have the progress because it, it is a function of time and experience so if your experience keeps growing your writing will also keep growing but i think majorly if i think majorly research conference where you present maybe poster or probably part of your work is basically advisable of course so also like again it is not compulsory that you have to have a research publication before you have a scholarship it is not compulsory you might have written because there could be a Sunday that you've sat down, maybe for like five hours, you can write like, let's say like um, a review on a particular subject, maybe two pages. You can just write that review, put it, you can upload it in your, on your research gate and put it as your sample writing. And basically it is quite enough for me because I just really want to check, can you be able to write something that makes sense? So I think that's what, um, people do look into because a lot of people don't have this research publication and they have full funding and we've seen a lot of them. So I think it is not really important, but please make sure you go to research conference as an undergraduate. And if you are very good, make sure you input, like you put yourself into uh, writing book chapters or manuscript, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Larry, for your question. They are very important questions. Um, there's a question in the chat box. Someone said, how can we convert our CGPA to top percent? Can you please come again with the explanation? I think uh, it is just it. normal. It is just normal um, division. Just divide your... Uh, I think CGPA. the person is referring to, you know, when you said for some courses, you can, you would know if you are like the top 5%. Oh, okay, okay. I mean the award. I think specifically this is for people that doesn't really have an award per se probably you don't really maybe you are like average student and you don't really have like an award so i think majorly you can check through your <coughs> if you check through your transcript and you see that there are some courses that you've excelled very well maybe like you got like 85 percent and above and you feel like okay i think you remember that you are part of people that actually scored high in this particular course. So you can just put sincerely using a very good mind because we are Muslims, because basically there's no, there's no points lying in your CV because at the end of the day, everything will be opened when you get to that school because they will tell you to do what you said on your CV. And if you are not able to do it, there will be problems. So there's no point, just put the correct thing that represents you. And when you get there, you know, Allah is going to help us. So I think basically make sure that everything you put there is really like very correct. So now, if you have a very good score in a particular course, you can just put top 5% or top 4% or something like that. Okay, top 4% in, um, let's say, um, in chemical engineering, let's say um, chemical reaction engineering, top 4% in programming or, or Python programming or stuff like that. So I think, and also you have to be careful, make sure that all those ones you'll be highlighting is directly related to that um, research interest you are pushing in your SOP. So don't just put something that doesn't really contribute to your, to your um, profile or to your application. So, so I think that is that, is that about. Yeah. Um... 
thank you once again, Toyi. Um, I don't think there's any other question. In the box. Is there any other question before we come to the end of this? And just to mention again, um, this um, discussion is organized by Muslims in Research and Academics, which is a group of young Muslims who are interested in or who are their early careers in academic or who are interested in starting their careers. And we um, discuss various topics that are um, necessary to build your um, graduate school, to build your career. And um, inshallah, we hope to, um, we hope for the group to get better and have more discussions like this. So the discussion um, is every month, last Sunday of the month, um, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. And for the person that asks um, a question initially, if you are interested in joining the group, you can um, put your WhatsApp number down and I will add you to the group in summer. And with that, we come to the end of um, to this program, it's 9.41. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's first. We come to the end of today's program. And Zazak Mulakhairan, everybody for watching. And Zazak Mulakhairan to Saeed for sharing his knowledge with us. May Allah reward you abundantly. Yeah. And um, I think